everyone, it's Wendy Kiladel here, and as always, I hope that this message finds you well. Now, this week, I thought I'd give you just a little bit of uh, more information, some of the kind of information that my clients get when they come into the End of Us Academy. You know, that sort of deeper level of understanding as to kind of the various elements that required to you really start to address what's going on with your body when you've got endometriosis at a very root level. Um, so this week, I thought I uh, would ask uh, Dr. Tony Cook, who has been a uh, mainstream medical uh, doctor in the UK, as well as kind of branched out into uh, wider expansion of knowledge and understanding as to the whole brain body connection. Um, I thought I'd bring him back. I interviewed him a couple of years ago now. Um, and um, just kind of explain a bit more about the role of natural bioidentical progestion and, um, and how that differs from the chemical progestins and progester, progesterins. And you can hear how the names are very similar. So there's a lot of confusion from people out there who don't really understand. Again, even some of the mainstream doctors don't actually uh, get taught about natural bioidentical progestion cream. They're just told about the chemical alternatives. Um, so again, you're going to hear from uh, Dr. Tony Coop. You'll, you'll recognize that this is just a very small part of a lifestyle changes and things that need to be required, especially from the emotional perspective when you're putting this condition into remission. So please do bear that in mind. This is not a quick fix approach to anything, as you know by now, if you've been listening for a while, this is just an element. But I know that uh, some, uh, some women do get uh, a bit confused, a bit frightened, a bit scared, uh, a bit sort of mixed up as to kind of like, you know, what are the differences and how does it work and is it safe? So again, I just thought that this might be really helpful to some of you who are maybe trying to do it on your own, but equally, please do remember, and you'll hear Dr. Tony Coop say right at the very end, there is no point in um, even trying with natural bioidentical condition cream if you haven't dealt with the emotional component. And I think um, I think I quote him correctly by saying, if you don't deal with the emotional side of things, your body won't heal. So again, this is where my programs are very specialized in supporting women with the, the more the deeper emotional things, even if you do have a counselor or therapist already, because it's quite a complex condition. The type of woman that we are, we've built up these exquisite self-defense mechanisms with various parts and various ways of being. And we have to kind of look at these things very gently, very slowly, whilst addressing all of the five Ps. So I hope you enjoy this interview. Um, he's a wonderful chap. And hopefully in, in the next couple of months, I'm going to be sharing how you can attend one of my live events, my first live events. And I'm hoping that Tony Coop is going to be coming to speak at that as well. And it'd be wonderful to meet you. So in the meantime, enjoy this video and, and this uh, podcast. And I will speak to you soon. Take care to your health. Hi, Tony. Hello, Wendy. Oh, hello, then, Wendy. Yes. How are you? You're looking well. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. It's been an interesting journey. How long was it that we did this before? Must be five years. Or I was just starting to get bad then. Yeah. And I have, but uh, I'm back again and um, working away. And um, I'm, I'm fine, actually, pretty well. Yeah, you look amazing. You look amazing. You're just, you know, a testament to what a uh, good frame of mind and attitude, eh? Yes, and various things, practicing practices and and uh, meditation and mainly chanting and music actually with me. But uh, yeah, because you does... had you were in part of a band for a while, weren't you? Yeah, still I'm still a drummer in a band in France, but not here. Oh, fantastic! Uh, but we're all getting on a bit, so it's probably not got many years left. But it's a blues oh, band. Don't see that, you know. <laughs> Well, that. it's just that people, bits are falling off people, you know, they're injuring their shoulders. <laughs> and, uh, you just uh, have to glue them back on with joy and music. Uh, here. Yes, that's right. Actually, that is a great help. That's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just the, the body might be uh, being affected by gravity a little bit, but that doesn't help. That doesn't uh, uh, affect the spirit much, does it? No, that's sort of the strange thing. I'm thinking, oh, my spirit's getting better and better, but my body's sort of beginning to fall away. Oh, well. If you do one, if you do the subtle stuff, yeah. it actually brings your physical stuff back a bit. That's Absolutely. what I'm. That's what I'm working on at the moment. Yeah, and even yeah. just from an energetic perspective, it's amazing, isn't it? You can tell when people are doing the work on themselves because they just have so much more energy. I know it's Their absolutely true. Yes, yes, I can see. I can see that you're you're in good nick. Yeah, thank you. Not yeah, things. I kind of know what I need to do, you know, to keep my body, my spirit, my mind, my emotions, and things all fluid it's when they get stuck and frozen and fearful 
that's when and that's what we're always navigating and <laughs> and managing isn't it it's probably more it, navigation than anything else it is and it's uh it's not just about sort of uh discipline because sometimes you know you really just haven't got it and, yeah. and you fall back but i think the purpose of that if there is one is to remind you that you can't go backwards you have to carry on well i i love the analogy of be like water you know kind of like you you if you uh, i try to live my life like moving floating on top of the river of life the, mm. the moment i try to dam up the water to control the water it gets all pond like and slimy and and, and i keep floating and relaxing and just sometimes i can't i don't know what's happening around the next corner but as long as you know i just have faith you know and as long as i'm able to go with the flow come back to instincts you know just because sometimes you hit a wall sometimes you get stuck sometimes you fall off the wagon you yeah. know, or try to be too disciplined and life comes along and goes nope you gotta relax you gotta yes, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, one of the swamis in america when i was over there many years ago uh we were talking about this and he said um you know you have to regard life as a river you can either swim out to the middle of the stream relax in the sunshine and float down the river on yeah. your back and it'll take you to your destination yeah. or you can hang on to the reeds and this <laughs> and the bank get caught up in all the sludge and the little yeah um what, what's it, what pond, it pond life yeah yeah the pond life and the and the sort of um no exit little bits and pieces um back channels and god knows what and uh you'll you'll take five times as long as to get there yeah. um so yeah. i thought that was a, a very similar that's Similarly. so true. Well, it's mm. so funny that, that you say that as well, because another meditation I had quite early on on my journey was that I was in a little rowing boat in, in the sea in a rowing boat and I was clinging to the rocks face and I was scared to let go because I didn't know where it was going to take me. Yeah. And then it dawned on me one meditation. Actually, it's more dangerous for me to be in this rowing boat, clinging to the rock because the waves <laughs> are bashing me against the rocks. <laughs> so, I, so I literally had this kind of visual metamorphosis of just letting go and just having faith that this river and whatever. And what was funny mm. was a few meditations later, this rowing boat, it grew into a big ship that grew sail. Oh, wow yeah so yeah so it's interesting you know you talking in those terms because it's all very visual and metaphorical for mm. the, the spiritual journey i guess well Luke, well Luke, thank you so much for coming on and chatting as you know the work that i'm doing again mm. incredible results with women who are i hate using the word broken but they're you know by the time they reach out to me they're in you know painful dreadful bedridden states and um yeah. Of course, as, as we've learned on our journey, the body is a representation of what's going on invariably subconsciously, past trauma, spiritually. And of course, it's just that's how it's the disease is showing up in the body. So by the time they come to me, you know, we're taking them through a very structured six months loving supportive process. And okay, and one of the one of the many things at, at the end that I introduce is to progesterone cream. But on the way to there, it's all about journaling, meditation, self dates, connection to self. You know, they get lots of support. They learn about produce and food and how toxic that can be, and about products, yeah. phytoestrogens, xenoestrogens. So they're they're learning all this stuff on the way. But what I found over the years is occasionally. The women get stuck on the natural bioidentical progesterone cream. I think because it's a hormone, they kind of get, take fright. And of course, if they speak to their own doctors about it, who aren't trained or taught about it, <laughs> they're like, oh, no, oh, no. And, and it just, you know, and then their doctors are trying to get them on some pharmaceuticals or some, you know, chemically altered hormones. And so I just, you know, you've had such an extensive experience with natural bioidentical progesterone cream. And again, what I like about your, your past and your history is you, you're not a, just a general medical doctor who's, you know, just gone by the training. You've expanded beyond that into these other realms and also understand mm -hmm. what can impact and affect the hormone levels in a woman is much more than just a cream. Mm -hmm. It's the cortisol stealing progesterone it's the xenoestrogens phytoestrogens it's all these factors so i wondered if you know we just had a conversation maybe half our conversation and maybe chat about some of the most common questions that come up for women 
I feel that with your your experience and my knowledge and I'm living example along with lots of other women, they can learn not to be fearful of it because it's just one of many elements mm. on mm. the journey, on the road to support them to full health um, and hormonal health. So how, how do you feel about that? Does that sound good? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've got a few, a couple of diagrams which might save a lot of words. Oh, I was fearful. I was like, because it's a hormone and it tends to be equated to doctors and medical that there's this mm. fear of kind of doing it wrong or getting it wrong. But I feel that um, once you have this deeper understanding, uh, not only just of that as a cream, but your whole mm. body and how it's affected, then it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, that is a major problem. And uh, I mean, I've been doing this for nearly 25 years now mm. after, after I left general practice early um to do a much more contemplative sort of medicine and uh what i've just it hasn't changed much um dr lee brought out that years and years ago after 20 years research i think this um, is about 30 years old this book now yeah right? i think so and he's written yeah. two others what doctors don't tell you about the menopause and the pre-menopause and yeah. i think he's done one about breast cancer as well yeah um but unfortunately he's no longer with us and um, it seems to have died a bit of a death, but uh, there's so much ignorance and willful ignorance from the mainstream, particularly certain aspects of the mainstream, the left brain mainstream, uh, supported by the drug companies who can't make money from natural progesterone. Yeah. Um, and even, uh, and the big thing is that they mistake progesterone with the progestins. Yeah. So that crops up in a lot of media stuff. Mm. women's magazines charities they're all fall for the same thing they say they call it progesterone but actually they're describing progestins which are synthetic and have a different molecular structure so they have different effects mm. and whereas both of them suppress for instance lining of the womb um, excess so that's a good thing for heavy periods and things like that but in other respects they're oppositional they you know they do different things and so that's where you get all the problems um, with the pill and, and with HRT. Mm. Um, so it's not just about the, um, the drug, which isn't a drug, I mean, because natural progesterone is the body's own hormone, yeah. identical to your own. And um, there are many, although there's not a lot of literature that really speaks to what we want it to speak to, yeah. uh, there are many other aspects of this which impress me. I read not so long ago that they discovered in uh, in America, on the uh, east coast of America, west coast of America, um, a 190 million year old fossil of a giant Pacific octopus. Oh, right. <laughs> and some bright spark said, I wonder how they've changed over these millions of years. So they did lots of scans on the, on the fossil yeah. and they found that it was anatomically absolutely identical to the giant Pacific octopus of today. Wow. And that include all its reproductive uh, anatomy, ovaries and uteruses and, and uh, I don't know how many they had. Um, but uh, they deduced from that, then, then they looked, I think they analyzed the fossilized uh, feces that were still in the body, in the fossil, mm. and they found that they were the breakdown products of, guess what, progesterone, estrogen, and uh, testosterone wow. so um it's been progesterone and the others have been around for 196 million years wow. starting with the cephalopods you know the boneless things yeah like, like uh, octopi and all the way through to us yeah so um there was a doctor called I, I don't know if she's still alive but dr ellen grant who described progesterone the natural progesterone as cancer in the tube well of course the journalists love that sort of thing and so that comes out and um she was mistaking it. She's written books about this, but I'm sure she was mistaking it for the progestins because she had a she had a great sort of um, uh, mission, really, to dampen down the use of um, the pill and HRT because of what she perceived was the wrong, what was wrong with it. Not not about progesterone. Not about progesterone. And that said, I think it's this misinformation and lack of education that is causing all the, the confusion and and as i say to a lot of my students it's not the doctor's fault because they're just a byproduct of their training it's doctors like yourself who've expanded your mind and i think the thing that would convince would convince a lot of people is to realize 
the the uh, the physiology of this yeah because all the uh, steroid hormones which includes the reproductive hormones testosterone estrogen progesterone dhea they're all made from guess what cholesterol yeah so don't don't get me going on cholesterol because oh i know uh, <laughs> it's that another hilarious. subject but it's another subject it's just as well statins aren't really given to younger people in their reproductive years otherwise there'd be all sorts of mayhem going on well there's a big push for, for as soon as you hit 50 to, to be on statins and things mm, yeah oh. absolutely so we'll ignore that and uh yeah. if we'd follow follow that I, I, unfortunately i couldn't get it onto my desktop but uh that's what it is that's the simplified version um, <laughs> And it goes from cholesterol to a, to an intermediary hormone, uh, which which itself splits into DHEA, from which is made testosterone and the estrogens. And as regards the progesterone, that's the other side of the split, the other fork. And that from that from progesterone is made aldosterone, which is the um, fluid balance uh, and electrolyte balancing hormone, and the stress hormone cortisol. Yes. So this immediately, once you look at that, you think, oh, and this is where you mentioned progesterone steel. Mm. What it means is that if you're very stressed over a long period of time, your um, body's ability to keep up with, the, with its um, precursor, progesterone, is severely compromised. And so then you get all this uh, chaos in your hormones. Yes. So it's, it's not just, um, uh, I would say, it, it's more stress and trauma than it is uh, toxins in the drinking water, the milk, the meat, or whatever. Yeah. Although both are both are true in terms of hormone disruption. But I think I think and I think there's uh, and whilst you and I understand this now, um, it's when you first are made aware of this, it's very hard I think for some parts of us to comprehend that there is subconscious trauma and stress playing on subconsciously. <laughs> this is why I take them on the journey that I do because it helps to understand all the little nuances. It's what I call the five Ps, the five poisons, produce, products, property, people, and past. Because if you can address all these things uh, as a multi-model approach, then you're dealing with the whole human, the whole body, whole mm. person, whole spirit and soul. Mm. Thing. So mm. maybe you could expand a little bit because that leads in beautifully to the cortisol production that steals from progestion. You know, again, uh, it was really helpful to have you on my journey share about, well, why is it that out of four sisters, only one sister, you know, has endometriosis and equally this whole kind of concept of subconscious trauma or stress playing out in the body? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big subject, but uh, I don't know. You probably know of Dr. Gabo Mate. Yeah. Um, he's, I think he's one of my he, heroes. All, all my students get his book at the beginning. To Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, we needn't go into that then because he's, he's so great. Um, what to say about that? Right. Well, um, if we look at, let me see if I can get this one up. There you are. Right. Awesome. Okay. So that's a drawing of, in fact, it's a drawing of the basic homeostatic state of the body. So it's all the all the important uh, nervous circuits in terms of your basically your autonomic nervous system which supplies all those circuits so you've got three on the right hand side the energy one the top right detox and the inflammation i'll put the cursor on it and yeah. then on the other side you've got the neuro endo which is the nervous and hormone um, sections yeah. and um, we learn these all separate in in medicine but actually, if you think of this as a flower with six petals, that's how closely intertwined they are because they are all, all connected. connected. They're all connected with each other. And um, you can see that each circuit um, has three main organs actually attached to them, like the hormone circuit has reproductive adrenals and thyroid. Yeah. Um, the uh, neuroaffect has autonomic nervous system brain and microbiome yeah. so you can see how everything is over 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 linked and yeah. in normal in normal health all that is amazingly kept in balance but what happens when you get severely acutely stressed you can imagine it coming up the uh, stalk of the flower yeah in the xylem and phloem if you remember your botany yeah um <laughs> and it spreads out into into the petals now yeah. Is it random? 
No, it isn't. Because uh, according to your temperament, according to your constitution, um, and in particular different, um, different constitutions of the different circuits, yeah. uh, there'll be a weaker circuit and the strongest one. So it's not completely. And also there's meaning in this, in that if you have... Um, where, where do we start with this? Well, if you look at the, the energetic circuit, top right, yeah. Um, basically, what's happening in acute stress is fight or flight or freeze, isn't it? Yeah. So that's a binary thing, in, in effect, because some of those, and this is a, a, an evolutionary thing, some of those are upregulated and therefore become more active. They would be the energy circuit, the cardionomic for your heart and blood pressure, and your nervous system has got to be absolutely on point to escape the, uh, the virtual... Um, mammoth or saber-toothed tiger that we talk about yeah. um, and other circuits are damped down because they're not needed for survival and they, those would be uh, the detoxification, the information circuit, um, probably the, the hormone circuit as well. Yeah. So it's either up or it's down. Now yeah. if it's down and, and you have chronic stress then the things that are, the, the circuits which are normally and the organs which are normally suppressed will be not so severely uh, suppressed, but, you know, to a degree. Yeah. And likewise, others will be super stimulated. And that means blood pressure goes up, your um, sugar is released into your bloodstream, so you get insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes, so your pancreas is affected. Yeah. Your thyroid may go up or down. If, you, if it's attached with immune, um, autoimmune problems, which is inflammatory, then and also confusion of communication, then it spreads. And you can see that not only does it spread outwards from the center, but each, uh, each circuit affects. And you can actually look at, take each one of these yeah. um, as an example and see that from it are a number of symptoms which when you coalesce the different combinations together, you can describe them as a disease. Yeah. Um, and you'll read often in quite learned um, journals and um, publications that, oh well, this disease uh, is, was, was present. Uh, stress makes it worse, but um, it's not the cause. Well, actually, it is the cause because it's physiologically the cause. Yeah. So if you look at the neuroaffect, if that is affected up, you're going to get... Uh, Psychothymic effect. You're going to get. Um, you can even get. You're going to get anxiety, depression. You're going to get um, because of all the hormones and neuro um, molecules of of communication affected. So you can also get personality disorders. If, if for instance, you've had abandonment in childhood, yeah. um, you may end up as what we what we describe as a borderline personality disorder. Um, Chronic fatigue syndrome and things like that as well. Chronic fatigue is an absolute classic because uh, if your energy circuits are if if your energy circuits are stressed enough, your um, there's a doctor in America who's done work on this. I think his name was Dr. Robert Marvia, and uh, he analysed the actions of the mitochondria, you, the, the energy producing things in our cells, and they they're like car tires. They can only do one thing or another. They can either create power and energy, or they can do alarm signaling to to warn everybody else. They're like they're like the meerkats of the of the of the, of the cell. Yeah. And if their energy, um, if they are the other thing, what was I just said? The um, alarm signaling, yeah. then they can't produce energy. So if that becomes chronic enough, then you've got chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah. Uh, and the body will close down all sorts of circuits. So you get different symptoms like um, uh, energy problems, or, you know, whatever. Um, we don't need to go into the details, but the principle is the important thing. Once you know the principle of what's happening, that it's binary, it's either things getting hyper-regulated and then getting exhausted, or things being shut down by the body. And when we run out of energy, the body will actually close down unnecessary parts of the system, which might give you numbness in your skin, it may give you all sorts of different things. 
and we call each one of these a separate disease, but actually they come from the, the chronic. Um, so almost all chronic disease can be um, attributed to this. There's a couple of so-called cranks going around, I think, on YouTube, saying there is only one disease. And actually, when you see, when you think about this in this way, you think, ah, oh, they've got something there. Mm. So the important thing is what you can do about all this. And uh, if we just focus on the hormone circuit, then there's a what I call the continuum of vulnerability for women from uh, well, it's actually longer than menical, menic, menic, menic to menopause, it, because we as um, as us were an egg in our mother's womb when she was a 16, 17, 18, 20 year uh, week old fetus in her mother's room, mm. uh, womb. So we go back physically connected with our grandparents. Yeah. And then of course there's the, all the other stuff that comes down, nature and nurture. Which, which is so fascinating. And yeah, and I, and, and I like how you've laid this out here because again, it shows all the interconnectedness mm. What we are as humans, and it isn't isn't really explained. It might be explained biologically and physiologically, but it might not be explained emotionally and spiritually, and psychologically, as in subconsciously, what what's going on. Because again, you look at that central part there. You go right, okay. Well, I just I better not get stressed then, and you get stressed about not getting stressed, and then before you know, because that and that's the the key work that we do in the Endoboss Academy mm -hmm. is trying to identify all the stressors that could be putting. But I just wanted to swing back round to menopause because again, it's an interesting label, menopause, isn't it? Because theoretically, all menopause is is the woman then becomes does not produce eggs anymore. It's almost like she pauses with men have been <laughs> because um ultimately we've still gone all these different influences of hormones obviously women who don't have endometriosis they may have a slight lowering of estrogen and progestin but women with endometriosis don't have that issue do they they're, they're they're producing they've got estrogen dominance and because of their symptoms they're producing cis fibroids adenomyosis and endometriosis so i just wondered what your take was on menopause per se Right. Well, menopause is really interesting because it really contains a clue to everything else in the continuum of vulnerability. And um, you've emphasized the lack of going into the emotional, spiritual levels. Yeah. But without that, you cannot heal. Yeah. And that's what I've come to the conclusion. Totally. Because, because, because uh, in menopause, well, you've got a mixture of all, all the symptoms. You know, they think of it as just an estrogen problem. Mm. Uh, that is a problem because estrogen apparently makes um, aff affects the temperature regulation part of the brain and disturbs that. So that's why you get the flushes. But uh, there's a little mnemonic, I think, the seven dwarf, the seven dwarves of the menopause. There are supposed to be 34-ish uh, different symptoms of the menopause. And of course, the menopause isn't a disease. It actually oh. describes. A, a period it's just of time. A period of time, exactly. I'm so yeah. glad you're speaking about this because I hear women all the time going, "Oh, well, I've been told I, I'm in menopause or perimenopause or postmenopause." I'm going, kind of, it, "It's kind of like a red herring. You it are is. a living human being that is affected by the environment and have changes in hormones every day." Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's so important about that is that it's physical, emotional, uh, physiological, mental, and and also spiritual you know. but, 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 but ultimately it, as you say it's just a stage which is influenced by the environment the the emotions and, and past and people and, and all sorts of different things so because you have young girls being thrown into menopause because they have these hysterectomies and stuff so it's not even an age thing per se no, I think no. we've spoken in the past that I think if if the body has if the the mind has worked hard to suppress feelings like uncomfortable or unpleasant feelings like anger and rage and uh, bereavement and, and abandonment then it, it it can only hold in those molecules of emotion for so long before it then shows up in the body and whether that happens to coincide with a, a menopausal woman or not um, it tends to get lost in the fray almost doesn't it yeah yeah I, there's uh it's really not helpful the way I mean, there have been uh, some TV programs and always articles about this. And they, some of the headlines are what menopause did to me as though, you know, um, 
external yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and they love it. Uh, it's a sort of ain't it awful description. They, they, they go into the symptoms and how awful it can be, yeah. but they don't go into the roots. Absolutely. And if, if you look at the, if you go back to the, through that physiology, back into altered project, uh, excess cortisol, stress, lower progesterone, disturbance, and you go through back in through into stress, where does that come from? Yeah. Uh, well, that's in our lives all, all over. Um, we've had Brexit, we've had uh, Boris, we've had um, Ukraine, COVID. we've had COVID. And um, we might mention that a bit later on, but um, where, where, where does all this come from? Why are some people vulnerable and others not? And it's to do with partly the degree of stress that you had and how your nervous system, particularly the autonomic nervous system, which runs all these systems, has been um, hyper-tuned, hyper-sensitized by... And trained two, almost, isn't it? Your yeah, nervous system two, is trained from did. a young age. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the first three, three years of life, what we need when we're brought up is safety. And we also need um, an approving, loving, um, unconditional... Um, regard really so we don't have to call it love but uh, if, if we're regarded positively and we're safe we do pretty well but mm -hmm. those are disturbed by any environment that don't have those things and the main ones are the ACEs the uh, adverse childhood experience which are been known for 20 years or more now um, they still aren't really talked about in the mainstream but that's abandonment uh, rejection Neglect, um, injustice, betrayal, and direct abuse. Now, there's, you know, in the newspapers you see the results of that. And one of the things that also is only just beginning to be talked about, um, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, well, because... I'm in the process of writing my my fourth book called Embracing Emotions, Empathy, and Energy right. about the HSP, the highly sensitive person. The, mm acutely highly intuitive sensitive person call them a history. absolutely it's supposed to be 15 percent of the population which explains why those of us who are like that find it so difficult to live in the world sometimes yeah. but the the great news is and i hadn't fully grasped this was that even though all those hsps uh, stroke empaths um, have vulnerability to stress in the future if they can find their tribe their uh, their niche in life, in relationship, in work, in creativity, yeah. then they've got all those uh, qualities which will enable them to thrive. So it's it's a blessing and a curse, or rather let's say it's a curse and a blessing because the blessing can come afterwards. Well, I was going to say, you, you think it's a curse at the time because you're not aware of it and, and equally yeah. the control and how you can navigate and manage it. But then once you learn to observe it and, and notice it, then you can learn to influence it. Mm. If we really understood that, we'd put enormous resources into childbirth, into um, mothers at that time. The first three years of life were absolutely crucial. Absolutely. And I think you, you mentioned Gabor Amati, and I think his work is really uh, yeah, yeah. about that, isn't it? And again, it's so poorly understood or appreciated the impact on the physiological and, of course, the deep subconscious and, and emotional development of children mm. in those early years. So. Uh, there are six states of being, if you like, mm. and we should be in this um, in this one with the orange, top right. Yeah. This is where we should be optimally most of the time. So yeah. here we're in relaxation, safety, calm, and we're in rest and digest. Our body's re being repaired, we're getting enough sleep, uh, the body's restoring itself, healing, etc. Yeah, so we can take a certain amount, we're designed to take a certain amount of stress, which is the this one where I say 20%. I would say maximum 15-20% of our lives can be in a stress state as long as we go back into the other one the rest of the time. Yeah. And if we're in fight or flight chronically, then we go into what you might call a maladaptive stress state, yeah. which affects everything. Uh, you become sensitive to all sorts of things, particularly stress, uh, your immune system suppressed, all those things happen that we've mentioned. Mm. And it changes your personality, so you become hyper-vigilant, hyper-reactive, you can be reactive to... Yes. Um, hormones, you can be reactive to nutritional, not just drugs, but nutritional supplements. You become a jittery person yeah. and uh, you've got 
great pressure of speech and you usually can't stop talking and um, you're all over the place, you know, you're like mm -hmm. a blue bottle and you wear yourself out. So this is why um, it's not so easy to just rely on getting back into here, but we have fantastic facilities yeah. um, and potential for moving through that into the meditative state. Uh, you notice that the, the brain states, which I've got here, here and here, the beta state is this fight or flight, the alpha state's normal, yeah. but everything starts to slow down once you get into the, your brain waves start to slow down, mm. and as, you, as your mind stills, then your true, um, you could call them the divine qualities, you know, the, uh, your intuition, uh, connection with people, clarity of thought, uh, spontaneity, kindness, compassion, yeah. uh, humility, all those divine qualities begin to come, come naturally appear. So, and then if you move into a deeper state of deep meditation more regularly, that's when you really get repair and healing, that's great, that's the a special part of sleep. And you can even rejuvenate then and begin to go backwards yeah. age-wise. And then of course beyond that that's is That's what we're doing, Tony, isn't it? That's what we're that's doing. That's right, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> Uh, and or you can go further and then you once you're established in it you've become enlightened yeah and established in the divine self so i found that really helpful because you realize that I we spend it. most of our time down here and if we're exhausted and we collapse we're in chronic fatigue and we're in um serious illness but we don't have to be down here uh, yeah. whatever's going on outside we can move away from that through all the things that we've been talking you've been talking about and I think that's it. It's recognizing. I, I love this diagram because it's kind of, you know, I'm a visual person as well. And I like seeing these kind of diagrams. It, it helps remind you of, of balance. I mean, I have this saying that the secret to life is balance. The secret to balance is awareness. And then the secret to awareness is through journaling and meditation. Because if you can keep, you know, present and mindful, then you can then recognize what you control, what you can't control, what you need to let go of and how that affects you physiologically. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, anything creative, anything you love, nature, music, uh, because breath work is so important, yeah. and that comes with chanting and breathing and learning all that stuff. And of course, the calming of the vagus nerve, mm. um, which calms all this, this the nervous system down, particularly the autonomic nervous system, it's very much about breathing in and then breathing out more slowly. And of course, yeah. if you, uh, which is why so many um, musicians are so, such calm people on, on the surface anyway, uh, because yeah. they are breathing like that, if, especially if they're wood, woodwind or saxophone or tuba players, because they are breathing out much in much slower ways in, against yeah, And you've got into that in your later years, haven't you? You've got yeah, into Yeah, I have, yeah. You want to share with the, the ladies what your musical musical um, choice is? Yeah, well, I, I'm a drummer in a blues band, and that's one level that yeah. helps coordination and presence and everything. You can't you can't uh, you can't go anywhere else in your mind when you're doing that, uh, and it's very physical. Mm. But um, I'm also doing been doing a lot of Chloe Goodchild's work. She's she's written a book called The Naked Voice. So it's about sounding. That our, the state of our soul is actually expressed in our voice. So oh. when we when we actually um, do that, and it's a vib it's an ex expression of your your soul vibration, if you like. Mm. If we're full of uh, stuff, our voices are muddy or sharp or whatever. Uh, and as as we practice listening and sounding and listening, not for performance, but what's in there, what, what do I hear, yeah. and you begin to read people really well, and mm. you can be much more compassionate with them, much yeah. more patient, and uh, then they will soften and relax, and then everything starts to unravel in a good way. Awesome. But I do, I've all, you know, I'm in some, something called Siddha Yoga, which is uh, mainly online now, fantastic resources on the website, most of it's free, yeah. I really recommend that, and um, what I just, one last thing, one, another way of looking at it, if, you, if, if anyone here doesn't know the human performance curve, this is really just another way of looking at what we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, the graph goes up 45 degrees and the 
horizontal axis is the effort we put into anything, the energy we expend, and the level of stress that we're under. Yeah. And um, according to the more, we put more and more effort into a stand from a standing start. We get interested. We get some energy. We're motivated. We get competent. Everything's fine. It all feels good. And that's for each of us. We all have a a top level of sustainable performance, if you like, or state yeah. of being. But if we push ourselves more than that because of our inner demons, you know, we need to prove ourselves, we need to people please, we need to... Of our perfectionists and pushers. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, and uh, Or more is demanded of us by bosses or unthinking spouses or whatever. Mm. Uh, then, then we moved into this flattened place and there you realize we're moving quite along the energy expenditure and increasing stress levels, but nothing's happening. We're not, get, we're not actually getting more out of ourselves. Mm. So we start to feel anxiety. And if we push ourselves more or, or more is demanded of us, we soon get um, loss of focus. We get fatigue. We start making mistakes. Then we're criticized for that. Uh, we start to have accidents. Then we get exhausted. Psychosomatic symptoms, asthma, IBS. Um, things, whatever yeah. and then if we break if we it's a very steep curve that as you mm. see um, a, a steep slope down to breakdown crash and burnout ill health well then we've got um, heart attacks strokes chronic fatigue syndromes autoimmune disease cancer God knows what so that's the bad place to be but if we can just become aware you mentioned awareness yeah. once we become aware of where where are our tipping um, point is yeah tipping point that's a good word thank you the tipping point is then we can get you can actually have the courage to say no to people whatever and you well, can I also think that, that's a lot of things that we work on is putting boundaries in place yeah. recognizing our feelings and emotions recognizing our limits and then how do we protect ourselves and put boundaries and things in yeah brilliant um, and of course we have to say no to ourselves to be, become aware when we're doing our compulsions yeah Awesome. I love your drawings. Yeah, I like them because it saves an awful lot of words. <laughs> it does. And I think it appeals to all parts of our brain as well as we're as we're mm. uh, absorbing yeah. this information. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it takes us back to when we were younger. It was so much easier when things were drawn because you could really understand concepts of something. Yes, the, the, right, the right brain comes in and takes this in in one, doesn't it? Not just yeah. uh, sequen sequentially. Totally. Yeah, well, it's appealing to all parts of the brain, I think, you know, the explanation and the drawings. It just right. kind of goes, yeah. ah, it makes sense now. Mm. So. Hello, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Well, Lou, thank you so much for sharing that, because I think what you, you do offer is this wider concept, which I think for um, these amazing women that are coming through the program, they have a deep level of intelligence and mm intuition which i think leads them to me in the first place because they know there has to be another way and they understand on some level that it's much more than what they're being told by the medical uh, mm. profession so it's wonderful seeing them grow and unfold and learn and, and come back to themselves and connect and and, you know, and grow but i think you know explaining it in that wider concept again exactly this is just you know a, you know a tiny little thing on the on the That's landscape right. it's, it's a supportive tool if you like to then, but at the same time, I've, I've said to some of them, please don't get fixated on just that one thing because it's so much more mm. than that. And I think one of the other questions that comes up before we finish here is, is that can you overdose on natural bioidentical mm. progesterone cream? I think there's concerns that they might put too much on or whatever. I mean, I, I advise them to use, you know, 14 day to 28 day roughly and keep tuning into their bodies and use a manufactured recommended mm. dosage. But can you kind of reassure them further on that right well in pregnancy uh, progesterone is one of the one of the most important hormones because it's there to support the the pregnancy itself the survival of the pregnancy and yeah. its name progesto progesterone suggests progestational so it's yeah. good for fertility and it's good for prolonging um, producing a full-term pregnancy which is so important for the yeah. future thriving of a baby Mm. Um, but the level of progesterone goes up a hundred times normal, mm. uh, so nature's not going to be mucking around with that. No. So it's it's actually one of the safest things on the market. You know, it's yeah. a, as long as it's identical with the with the um, 
with the body's own, if you're absolutely exhausted adrenal-wise and stress-wise, to put progesterone into the system then without dealing with the, the exhaustion problem yeah. may be like um, putting another hundred weight on the back of a totally exhausted cart horse. Yeah. It, may, the, it may crash. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, something to bear in mind if you're really severely exhausted. Don't rush into progesterone initially. Try and get back to some sort of energy. You need energy in the system, as the acupuncturists know, to actually uh, work with improving things. Yeah. No, I'm so glad you're saying that because this is why the program's designed and that like the first, you know, three, 12 weeks or so is all about addressing other stressors and then continuing. And we only bring in progestion at the end as, a, as an additional support. Yeah. But know. it is a vital thing because uh, if you think of, of that descent into illness, it's a spiral, isn't it? It goes down and down and down. And when you're down here, you you have to really reverse it in the order of which it and if, if you're down in the level where physical things are happening, yeah. you need to stabilize your physical body before for a while until you've got enough energy to actually begin to address address these things. Yeah, well, no, well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. I know on my own journey, you know, I kind of felt that I needed to take progestion cream almost continuously at certain points. So um, because my body was just so affected, but it's it's amazing how that combined and i think some people think oh i'll just focus on that one thing and mm. it's like no 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 we're, we're no, no. it's that oxymoron we're very <laughs> very simple but we're also quite complex you know so it's it's remembering to stay in that as we were saying at the beginning that river of life and that water state that flow state balance state and keeping our awareness up about what's what's coming in on and around our body that could be affecting us because there's so many different elements now isn't it yeah yeah well thank you so much for coming on and explaining that you really are a star i appreciate no, it absolute pleasure we're so aligned on all this you're doing great work i know it well thank you i appreciate it so much you're, you're a superstar and i know the woman will be so comforted and soothed to hear it from you because you've been doing this for so long and you understand mm. it from that the whole wide perspective not just from the pharmaceutical kind of yeah. storyboard you know yeah. uh we have to go on till we've altered the uh, change the NHS into into this sort of model. I'm absolutely, serious. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think it's my aim is to. I've actually got a meeting with Scottish government health minister and things like that. I wanted to really make sure I get into schools and and try and influence the medical training yeah. and stuff because I think the doctors, some young doctors coming out who are kind of questioning things. Mm. Of course, their hands are tied by their you know, their medicals, whatever, you know, insurance and stuff that they, they can only say what they've been taught. And I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. What you're saying doesn't make no, sense. No, no, it's not you know, coherent. It's not coherent anymore. And I said, you know, if you think about this in a very simplistic, logical fashion, you know, we have to think differently. You have to think outside the box. Mm. So, it's, uh, uh, it's looking at the forest, not the trees. Yes. So much. Absolutely. Um, so non-dualism, you know, non-binary thinking is really vital. Yeah. Um, one last thing, it's like uh, I went to a meeting where there was controversy about chronic fatigue and yeah. the statement was, is chronic fatigue a psychological condition as opposed to a virus, uh, a virus? Mm -hmm. And of course the virus is only opportunistic because of the state that seems to be invisible to the medical profession yeah. which has existed beforehand, Absolutely. which is like the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. But this, this is this has been going on for 30 years, you know. Well, well, that's it. I mean, I, what I try to do is, you know, try and approach the, the mainstream medical in from an educational perspective. Not yeah, not, a, not an oppositional one. Not an opposition saying we're working together for the health. It's the whole do no harm, isn't mm. it? That's the oath you take as doctors. Yeah. So if, if what you're doing is harming your patient, would you be open to at least learning? Mm. But this is where Dr. Sarah Myhill as well is amazing. She's been yeah. fantastic, you know, and, and, and helping me understand all those little nuances and things as well. But again, with you and your journey, you allowed this whole emotional, psychological, subconscious stuff to really, like you said about the eggs, you know, our, our eggs, you know, when we're, it just blows your mind because that's yeah. not taught, it's not mainstream. And I think, mm. I think as, as we evolve, I think we actually do have that hunger to know that information somewhere and deep down, we, we're, yeah, we, we know we're missing it. We don't need to be oppositional because the people who are suffering most now 
uh, almost as much as the patients are the staff, the frontline staff, the doctors, the nurses. Oh, I know. The yeah. unsung heroes of these people yeah. who are kind of fighting. But, uh, that they, but with, they can be helped through through this shift. So maybe it will, maybe maybe this is a it's a wonderful chance, a wonderful opportunity, isn't it? Really, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Just keep focusing. For, well, look, thank you so much for coming mm. on. It's so lovely to see you again. And you, you're doing well. Speak soon. Take care, Tony. Bye bye. Bye.